Next, we see the application scenario. So um, in this application scenario that we are going to see, basically, we are going to see the uh, SourceNet application as well as the Net Server applications. So uh, this is nothing special. Basically, we have a uh, trust zones, 192.168.0.1/24 networks, DMZ 192.168.20.1. And untrust zone 202.169.10.1. So uh, the scenario over here, we are going to use the source net and the net server, which means that we are going to uh, allow the internet user to go out to the uh, other zones as well as to allow the external zone to come into our trust zones. So let's see how the configuration works. Firstly, um, if we are going to use the uh, source net, we can choose uh, to use the uh, net address pool mode. So in this case, this is what you can see on the uh, net address pool mode, which is we have to create the pool. So firstly, uh, the name of the pool, then followed by the range of addresses. Now the range of addresses over here is our public IP. Okay, then um, we can choose to perform the address pool mode with pad or without pad. If we want the pad to perform the port translation, then we should check the box. Then, since um, we actually have the uh, packet filtering by using security policy. So if we are doing, going to do a NAT, then we need a NAT policy. So this is uh, fall under the policy icons under the web interface. So if we go into the net policy, then we select the source net. So under the source net, we click uh, add to in order for us to create a new source net policy. So in this source net policy, first of all, we are going to uh, specify the name of the policy, then uh, the type of a net, that's most important. Net mode, we are going to choose the source net. Then uh, for the original data packet, we basically we will actually refer to some parameter example uh, from trust zone to untrust zone. So source zone will be trust and destination zone will be untrust. Then for our uh, translated data packet, the source address can choose to translate to the address pool based on the uh, outbound interface, that's for easy IP, or addresses that's inside the pool. So if we're going to use the address pool mode, then we should choose these options. Okay, so uh, what we did just now is actually for the uh, source net, which allowing the internal user or the trust zone user to go to the untrust. And then we also need to do a reverse, which is the net server or port forwarding for the external to come in. So in this case, we are going to uh, add the server mapping. So this particular uh, creating of server mapping can be seen in the web UI under the uh, SIM tab, under the net, poly, uh, sorry, under the net column. Okay, so we are going to create a net server mapping. In this case, we are going to create a name. Okay, then uh, we are going to assign a designated public IP in accordance to represent to our private web server that's in our uh, trust zone. Then we also specify what are the ports or protocol that will be used in order for the communications between the external party to the internal web server, or maybe it's actually for the uh, FTP file server. Okay, then uh, we also can check the box to allow the server to use the public IP address for internet access and uh, configure a black hole route just in case you want to discard uh, packets. Okay. Then under the interzone security policy, okay, we have net policy, then we also need to come back to the security policy in order for us to allow a uh, specific traffic to pass through, example, uh, from untrust to DMZ, let's say. Then we also need to um, set up all the parameters, which only limited to the FTP functions under the services. Okay, then the action is permit so that we can actually uh, 
see the traffic passing through the firewall. Now, what we can see over here is actually the uh, configuration in CLI or the commands for you to create the net address group. So uh, nothing special here. It's pretty much the same as your web GUI. It's just that uh, you're, first of all, you're going to create the name. So the name over here for our pool is net address group one. Then the range of addresses start with sections 202.169.10.2 until the end of address 202.169.10.6. So which means that we have the address starting from 10.2, 10.3, 10.4, 10.5, and 10.6. So these are the available addresses in our address pool mode. Then next, we need to configure the uh, source net policy. So uh, under the system view, net policy, followed by the rule name of our net policy, followed by the uh, parameter to be used Okay, uh, including the source zone, destination zone, addresses, as well as our actions. So our action over here is to perform net using the address pool mode. So action net address group one is actually referring to the uh, source net actions. Then um, the net server also need to be configured in CLI as well just in case we never use the web UI method. So what you can see is something like this, net server, WW server protocol TCP, global public address, okay, and the port that represent our internal 192.168.20.2 with the port 8080. Same goes for our FTP server, so no big deal, same thing. Okay, then the next stuff will be our security policy whereby um, we have our rule name, Okay, that's specifically uh, specifically designed for different purpose. Example for untrust to DMZ access for the web, and the second rule is which is for the FTP purpose. Next, we talk about our twice net. Okay, so application scenario over here will includes the um, net server plus the source net, which is what we have just now. And now we also include uh, an intra-zone net. So in this uh, example over here that we have, the uh, inter-zone twice net is happens in this scenario whereby our internal server is 192.168.1.5. So uh, 202.20.1.5 will be the public address for this internal server when we uh, appear to the internet user. And for the internet user, which is using a 2.2.2.5, uh, when they try to access to our internal server, they will appear as the uh, private address of, of our internal network, which is 192.168.1.1. So in the net server configuration, the internet server can send the uh, response packet only after the route destined for the public address is configured. So which means that we actually need to perform routing. But if let's say we want to make our uh, configuration simpler without routing, then we can configure the firewall to translate the uh, address of internet user when they come into the internal network, we are going to translate their 2.2.5 2.2.5 into uh, 192.168.1.1, which is belongs to the same uh, network to, as appear to our internal network. So the source address after NAT, which is the 192.168.1.1, will be the same network segment as the private address of our server. So in this way, our server will actually send the response packet to the device by default as a layer 2 then the device will forward the response packet to our internet user. Okay, so then we also uh, can see that if let's say the net is performing twice 
but now it's in the intra zone rather than the example just now, which is in the inter zone. So basically, the same idea over here. So example, let's say internet user is um, using the the IP address of the user will be translated into the network segment address of the server, and for the server to reply, the server also will translate its own uh, address, okay, as the same segment uh, for the internal user, which means that the translations uh, is happen inside the same zone. So uh, this is possible, and this is what you call as intra zones twice net. So we only use this when our internal user and the server are in the same security zone. But the internet user is required to access only the uh, public address of a server. And in this scenario as well, our destination address of the packet that we send to the internal server will be translated from a public address into a private address. And the source address must translate from a private address to a public address. Okay, so uh, we are reaching uh, the last part, which is a small quiz over here. So which of the following are reasons why NAT emerge? So as we know that the uh, NAT is actually emerge for the purpose to resolve the limitations of IPv4 address. So therefore, over here, the answer is pretty straightforward. So we have the insufficient IP address resources. Okay, so that will be one of the answer. Then secondly, uh, we also can use NAT to protect our real internal IP address. Okay, so answer A and B. So to conclude this uh, NAT topic, basically we can see that we already go through a series of uh, uh, principle of NAT, how actually it works. And we're also able to see the type of uh, NAT that's available, source NAT, um, easy IP, as well as the uh, NAT server. Then we also see the um, application scenario, as well as the uh, configurations in CLI, as well as the web UI. So that's pretty much for this NAT topic.